our message today on the divine seed. Say hallelujah, somebody. And last week, we handled the seed of God and the spirit of God. Say the seed of God and the spirit of God. Come Holy Spirit and bring us to that place of promise by the word of the Lord. Say amen. Now in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 11, the Bible explains the power of seed. In the beginning when God made heaven and the earth, he established in the earth system principles that will bring the earth into his perfect plan from eternity to time and back into eternity. And in verse 11, when seed was made, the Bible says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the earth yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And so it was. Whose seed, whose seed is in itself? Look at the Amplified of verse 11. It says that the seed is a seed in itself. See, the seed is a seed in itself. The Amplified says, and God said, let the earth put forth tender vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees yielding fruit whose seed is in itself, each according to its kind. Upon the earth, and it was so. Each according to its kind. An amazing statement in the scriptures. The seed has its own genetics in itself. In other words, God made seed and programmed every seed to produce after its kind in perfection. So there is a supernatural programming in seeds. You know, we have computers which are programmed to produce results. And we have computers that are programmed to produce results when required upon. Uh, uh, we have these days, you know, uh, uh, electronic cameras uh, controlled by computers. And 24-7, and these, these cameras are on alert are watching and recording every movement and every sight and every activity 24-7, programmed by a computer. The Bible says, for God made seed and programmed every seed to produce exactly what had been put in them. See, hallelujah, somebody. Are you listening, please? So we have genetics or genes. Then we also have programs in seed. So when you take the, 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 uh, the seed that produces the rose, 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 rose flower or coconut, the, the seed has the power to produce not only a coconut, but the tree that produces the coconut, it produces the roots of the tree, the leaves of the tree, the stems of the tree, the various aspects of the tree that makes it what it is to produce after its kind again. So if I, were to, if I were to say that we took a coconut seed and plant it, the, co the coconut seed will, will say, I shall return. You have put me under the earth, but I shall return with time. But I will return with a program, with a process. I will first become a tree. I will develop my leaves. I will develop my branches. Then I will develop my personal seed growing process. And when I am ripe, I will be a seed again. And I will be a coconut again. See, hallelujah, somebody. With this in mind, God set the, the earth's program in seed multiplication. So long as the seed remains, everything will be exactly as God originally planted it. The first coconut that ever came on when the earth was created has not changed from the coconut we see today. 
mangoes have not become passion trees or passion fruits. They've been mangoes as they've been made, made, made mangoes. And mangoes they are, and mangoes shall they be, and mangoes shall they always be. Because of the power of the seed. See, I'm listening. Now, with the fall of man, when God made Adam, he made a seed also. Look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. I'm handling for the third Sunday so far the seed of God and the spirit of God. And God said, let us make, make let us, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, this is amplified, make mankind in our image and after our likeness. That sounds like seed to me. That sounds like seed to me. I said, that sounds like seed to me. Let's make man, I the Father, I the Son, I the Holy Ghost. They said, in agreement, let's make man in our image and after our likeness. Sounds like seed. See, hallelujah, somebody. And let this seed called man have complete authority over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the tame beasts, over all the earth, and over everything that creeps upon the earth. So if this seed of man is to have dominion over all things, then man is in the God class. So I will call, call man the God seed. Because it is the only seed that has power over every other seed in the earth system. So God made things to produce after their kind. And he made himself also to produce after his kind. And he made Adam. And put Adam in charge of all creation. All creation. Anything that could be seen with the natural eye, Adam was the ruler thereof. Adam had dominion because in him was the seed of God that was to produce after its own kind. See, I'm listening. And do you know why God, God took the woman out of the man? Was so that the woman would not be of any different seed. He took out of the man. Himself that he put in the man. That the woman was part of the dominion seed. And God did not take out of the soil to make a woman, but took out of the genes of the seed. So the spirit of the seed in the man will be the spirit of the seed in the woman. Oh, say hallelujah, somebody. Are you listening, please? Are you listening, please? I'm talking about the seed of God and his Holy Spirit. So here, after, after God made the man and, and with the genetics of the woman in the man, the Bible says in chapter 2, please, chapter 2, verse 7, the process is that and, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So the seed was made, and God put his spirit in the seed. That it will produce the life of God out of the seed. So God made a seed and put his spirit in the seed. Say, I was made by God. To grow by his spirit. To live in his spirit. To fulfill the desires of God by the Holy Spirit that dwells within me. Look at someone and say, I'm a seed of God. Look at someone and say, I am a seed of God. Look at someone and say, my, my children are the seed of God too. So, 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 so in the natural it is as if our children will look, will look like us naturally. But in the spirit, they are all God's seed. 
So, so when your wife is pregnant, God's seed is in her womb. It's not your seed. That's why you don't determine whether it's a boy or a girl, or three girls or four boys, or three, three. This is God himself who releases into the earth what he wants. Through the seed process, his spirit carries the next generation through. Say amen. Well, when, 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 when Adam and Eve lost the game and, and were, 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 were moved out of the garden, there was a major attack on the seed. The enemy tried to hack the seed. And if he could take that seed, then he could, he, he, he could multiply his demonic powers through the program of the seed. Because Lucifer was never a god like Jehovah. So he did not have the power to create. Angels don't create. They are not creator beings. But if he could take that seed, he could infuse a strange program in the seed that was already alive. It's called hijacking. Most hijackers don't have what it takes to manufacture an airplane. They just take it by force. The devil is a hijacker. After God creates an airplane, he comes to hijack it. And he uses it to do his clandestine things as he, he wants. That's why it's important for all of us to walk in holiness and righteousness to guard our seed because there's a thief out there that likes to hijack the programs of God. One more word I want to use for seed is program. It's a program of God. It's programming. We just d d discovered computer programming recently, but God had it a long time ago before the foundation of the world. I pray that every seed is protected. Every seed is preserved in the kingdom of God. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, in the process of, of the fall of man, God immediately transformed his program and preserved the seed and preserved the spirit of the seed that the enemy may have the agenda but the seed of God will be separated from the seed of the enemy. So in Genesis 3 verse 5, verse 15 please, Genesis 3 verse 15, the Bible says that and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So God immediately separated the pure seed out of the corrupted seed. So there must, be, there must have been something about Adam and Eve that were already corrupted. But God said, no, I have, I have the blueprint that Adam is not the original seed. My son Jesus is the original seed. And what, what, what was deceived was, that, what, was not the original seed. It was the Adamic seed. And God said, I will preserve the, Messiah, the, the Messianic seed. That it will not be corrupted by the Adamic seed. In other words, let me put it, let me put it this way. Do you know that when you, you, you buy a car, let's say Chevrolet, Chevrolet um, Cruise, there's a car called Cruise, Ch Chevrolet Cruise. The one you buy is not the original one that was manufactured. The first product of the Cruise is still in the manufacturing company. They normally exhibit it as, a, as an exhibit. What you buy is the prototype. There is always an, an original seed. Now God kept the original seed, which was Christ in heaven, and produced each type in, in Adam. So when the devil, as it were, stole Adam, so to speak, he didn't lay hold on the original seed. So he, he missed it. See, hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Am I making some sense here? Yes, 
Yeah, let me give you another example. How many of you have seen pictures before? Yeah, I saw the picture of our president, uh, His Excellency um, Donald Trump, Donald J. Trump, His Excellency. I saw his picture that he had gone on a vacation. And that was a beautiful picture. But the original man is not a picture. Now, I saw a picture of him climbing the airplane, the Air Force One. That was a picture. But the time I was seeing the picture, maybe the original man was lying in his bed sleeping. But I saw him climbing an airplane. So, so what, what I saw was the prototype of the real seed. Christ is the real seed. Thank God the enemy didn't have access to the real seed, to the original seed. Because God knew that this game was going to be played in the garden. And Adam could make it or not. So before the foundation of the world, he established the divine seed. And the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Knowing very well that Adam being man could go this way or that way. And God being God protected his destiny. Oh, I, 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 are, you, are you following what I'm saying? Good. And so when, when, when this thing happened, God said, well, I, I, I knew this was going to happen. I knew that perchance Adam and Eve could be deceived. I didn't hope they would be. I planned them not to be, but they, they chose to be. But in events that they chose to be deceived, my plan was to succeed because I kept the original seed. And on that day, he revealed the, the original seed. He said, now that you have done this, that there's an enmity between my seed of heaven, which is now going to be the seed that will, will be found in the woman from the seed of the devil. So two generations began on the earth. The generation of the devil and the generation of God. And God placed an enmity, a wall. Between the generation of the devil and the generation of God. The seed of the woman is a generation of God. But the seed of the devil is a generation of Lucifer. And the generation of the sinful world. My question is before I continue. Of which generation do you find yourself? There's an enmity. You can be a Christian and enjoy the devil's world. Which is an enmity to God. You must choose which side you belong. I belong in the seed of the woman, the seed of God. You, you, know, you know, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. You can choose to serve the God of this world, the seed of mammon, but as for me, we shall serve the house of the Lord. Hey, Kabbalah Satahaya. Say, I am a product of the seed of the woman. The, the woman is the seed. That God said, even though this thing happened, I'm not going to take my seed from, off, from out of the, the earth. But I have, I have a recovery plan. And this recovery plan shall still come through man. My original plan was to use man, Adam. But even though this accident happened, I will still continue my plan. I will still use man. I will still use woman. But I have my seed. It's only a matter of time. So God began the propagation of his seed. And all through scriptures, I have seen the seed of woman and the seed of God following a, a, a specific trajectory, a specific line, a specific lineage called the priesthood or the prophets or the sons of God or what is called the children of Jehovah. So you know what happened? Adam and Eve gave birth to two sons. One had the seed of the devil. And one came out as the seed of God. Cain and Abel. It was produced after what God said. I put an enmity between the seed of God and the seed. The seed of the woman and the seed of the world. And guess what? There was a controversy between, Adam, between Cain and Abel. The two seeds clashed. 
and the wicked one killed the God seed. But because that seed was a spirit, even though Abel was killed, the spirit was still alive. Because every seed has a spirit within. It's called the genes. It's called the program. Are you listening, please? Then the Bible says, let's look at this. Genesis, Genesis chapter 4, verse 25 and 26. And Adam knew his wife again because the first two seeds were, were wiped out. God, God couldn't use Cain because he accepted the seed of the devil. And the one he, he could use was Abel. He was killed. So God gave them another child, a third child. And this child was called Seth. And she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God said she has appointed me another seed. Say another seed. Instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. So, so even Eve knew that Abel was a godly seed. And, and, and um, sorry, if, even Eve knew. Is that what I said? Eve, Eve and Adam knew that Abel was a godly seed. And ding it, he was killed. But God being so God, even though they possibly did not know how to continue their generation, because now that Cain was a, was a fugitive, was thrown out of the world, was no more with Adam and Eve. Nobody knew where they were, where he was. He, he, he went out, only God knows, and began a strange generation. We have the generation of Cain in the earth. They became the very strange human beings. Strange human beings. Strange giants. Strange people. Out of God's world. The seed of the devil. But as for God, there was no seed of, of, of God. Like Abel. Please listen to, to this message. Say, I'm listening. This is why it is often said. How come bad things happen to good people? Because of this story. That the enemy is always after God's seed. If you are God's seed, you are carrying God's genes. You are up to bring glory to the earth. And take the earth back from the hands of the enemy who stole it. So he goes after you. Even before you know who you are. Trying to confuse you, trying to mess you up, trying to call your names, trying to discourage you. When you grow, he wants to pull you back. That's why there's a fight for every child of God to maintain his seed. Because not because you are, you are a real sinner, but the enemy hates you just because you are, you are a seed of God. You don't have to commit any sin. You are an enemy to the devil. Because God said it, that there shall be an enmity between my seed and the devil's seed. So sometimes you hear people say, oh, what did I do wrong? Well, you didn't have to do anything wrong. The fact that you are a seed of God, the enemy sneaks in to fight you. Say hallelujah, somebody. Am I making some sense here? Say, are you listening, please? The Bible says, and the woman said, God has given me another seed. My future is in, is in the God seed, she said. And thank God he's given us another seed. A godly seed. God said. Look at verse 26, please. And, and to set to him also there was born a son. And called his name Enos. He then became, be, sorry, then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. It was from the, from the generation of Seth that prayer began on the earth. Prayer, which is the desire to seek the face of the Lord, the godly seed. Set was the face, was the first pray man, because he was the seed that began to have awareness of the contention between the principles of God and darkness, and the struggle began for the seed to preserve their seed in God. Upon, from the days of Seth, men began to call upon the name of the Lord. 
So prayer is not only for you to get a new car, but prayer is needed to proceed, to, 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 to protect your seed, to protect your glory, to protect your calling, to protect your mandate, to protect your vision, to protect who you are and what God has made you to become. It is for your own destiny. Because, 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 because if the devil could deceive Adam, I don't know if you are more righteous than Adam in terms of stature at that time. But the enemy found a, found a way around him. Maybe if he was praying like Seth, he would have been able to cut off the head of the serpent. So from the days of Seth, prayer became a necessity. In, in, in other words, prayer is a divine seed Preserving principle. Say hallelujah, somebody. Now the generation continued. Then came in Genesis chapter 6, the earth was full of evil. So you can see the Cain spirit continued to multiply upon the earth. And God disliked the earth. And God disliked what man was doing. Evil was predominating upon the earth which was contrary to God's plan, the righteousness should, should dominate. So the righteous people became the minority, and the evil became the majority. And God said, the earth has been so destroyed. I will begin again. And guess what? He went for a seed. Look at verse, verse 7 and 8. Genesis 6, verse 7 and 8. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the earth. For it repents me that I have made them. Verse 8, let's all read. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Look at verse 9. It says that these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation, and God walked with him. And Noah walked with God. And God walked with him. And he walked with God, the seed of God. And God said, yes, I will destroy this earth again. I will wipe it out, but I will preserve the seed. So the seed of Abel that was cut off, came upon Seth in the spirit, and Seth produced a generation of God-loving people. Noah was the prime seed. God took that seed, put that seed in, in the ark, destroyed the whole earth, and began a new generation again upon the earth, the righteous seed. I come to tell you today that the principle is still alive, and you are a seed of God. You are the divine seed that the earth needs to grow and to become what it's supposed to be. You are the divine seed in the marketplace. You are the divine seed in education. You are the divine seed in, 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 in medicine. You are the divine seed in the entertainment industry. You are the divine seed in commerce and trade. You are the divine seed on the earth. Bellevue shall become strong in the sight of the Lord by the seed of God. Each time God seed prospers, the nation rejoices. Each time the devil seed prospers, the nation is in turmoil. The nation is in crisis. Nations are in crisis because of the multiplication of the seed of the enemy. I pray this day that Lord arise, let the seed prosper. The seed of God. Let the seed of God prosper. I said, let the seed of God prosper. I said, let the seed of God prosper. We are the seed of God, the seed of Abel, the seed of Seth, the seed of Noah. Then Noah also produced a seed called Abraham. See, hallelujah, somebody. God produced a seed called what? Abraham. And look at what God spoke concerning that seed. Genesis chapter 17, from verse 1, please. Are you being blessed today? From verse 1 to 7, please. And when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said to him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. 
and I will multiply thee exceedingly. It says in verse 4, and Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, read with me, let's go. As for me, behold, my covenant is with and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I was, and I will make thee what exceedingly fruitful. I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of, yes. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed. Say hallelujah, somebody. So God established the king tribe, the kingly seed on the earth that will rule and, and establish God's dominion again, establish God's righteousness again. Who am I speaking to today? Say hallelujah, somebody. And in that seed of Abraham, are you listening, please? In that seed of, of Abraham, God put all the blessings we need and put also our covenant with the Holy Spirit. Look at Galatians 3, verse 13 and 14, please. Galatians 3, verse 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed thee from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone that hangs on the tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through what? Faith. The promise of what? Of the Spirit. So in the Abrahamic seed, God has the Holy Spirit activity to cohabit with man. It, it was part of the blessing. So, so in the genes of God, which was the God seed, which was the seed of the woman, which is the seed of Abraham, which is the seed of Christ, God has put in you, in, in that seed, the ability to produce after a spiritual seed. A holy spiritual seed. That the seed will produce after its own kind, and the seed will love God from the womb, and the seed will be a righteous seed, and the spirit of that seed will multiply after its own kind. See, the seed of God is in me, and that seed will love the Holy Spirit. Do you know that when, 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 when Mary was pregnant with the baby Jesus and Elizabeth was pregnant with the baby John the Baptist, when the two women met, the Bible says, for the Spirit of the Lord came out of Mary's womb into the womb of Elizabeth. The seed was, was connecting to the Spirit of the Lord that was in the seed. In other words, what, 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 what keeps you and I always loving God is the inherent seed of the love of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit in, of God in you will make it impossible for you to love sin and love sin. And no matter how much you are in sin, you come out of it because the seed... <sighs> Say, my children will always love God. No matter what they do wrong, they'll come back home. Because the Spirit of God is a seed in their seed. So, so oh, my, my time is up. Almost up. Almost up. Are you listening to this? This is why... The prophets who began to come up on the earth were all prophesying by the seed and the spirit of the seed. The spirit of God that was in the seed of Abraham, which was the root seed out of which all the prophets came, prophesied by the spirit of God that was in Abraham's seed. So there's no prophet that we know upon the earth who was not Abraham's seed. Because in Abraham's seed was also given the promise of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, in, in Exodus, a seed came up called Moses. 
he was the seed of, of, of a woman. The seed of the woman, which is the seed of Abraham, was in Moses, and he worked the works of God. Then came Joshua. He worked the works of God. Then came the judges. They worked the works of God. Then came Ruth. Then came, came, came Isaiah, the major prophets. And all these prophets were living by the seed of the woman. The seed of Abraham. The seed of God. So God's seed in heaven, Christ. But God's seed in the earth, Abraham's seed. And these two were in cahoots, working together in the Holy Spirit. So Jeremiah was God's seed. Abraham's seed. Nahum was God's seed. God's seed. Abraham's seed. Uh, Deborah was God, Abraham's seed. God's seed. In the seed itself, it produces after their own seed. So, so the, 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 the high priest Aaron produced his own children. And Aaron's seed became priest after Aaron. So your children shall also become seed Amen. of priests. Because it is our gene. It is in our genes. Oh, who am I speaking to today? Then came David. Then he, he produced the Psalms. Then came Solomon. The same spirit, the same seed from generation to generation. So today, you are connected to a genealogy of a God seed. I call it, I call it the God tribe. Out of here shall come prophets. Out of here shall come enlightened leaders. The seed of God. With the Holy Spirit. And that seed is Christ in heaven, yet to be revealed in the Old Testament. But his spirit was in the seed, making them prophesy the mind of God. Even though in the Old Testament, it was the spirit of God. So Revelation 19, verse 10. Oh. So we are blessed. To be God's seed. The Bible says, and, and, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant. The angel was telling John. And thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So every, everybody who prophesied in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, prophesied by one seed, Christ. And by one spirit, Christ. And by one testimony, the living Christ. In, in other words, if you have the spirit of Christ, you can prophesy. The testimony of Jesus is the seed of the woman. It's the spirit behind every prophecy. Say hallelujah, somebody. See, hallelujah, somebody. That seed, that seed has survived over the years. And the Bible calls it the incorruptible seed. First Peter chapter 1. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 7 to 11 and 12 and verse 23. It says, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold, that perishes though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. In other words, the seed that you are is, is so resilient that no matter what you go through, you will prevail. Amen. That the, 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 the more persecution, the more attacks you go through, the purer you, you become. Amen. Because the seed cannot be destroyed. By the devil. It's far above the, the, the devil's pay grade. They may do things, but it has no bearing on the spiritual conclusion of life. They may impede your, your progress for a while, but if only you'll be faithful and strong, you shall prevail. Because the prophecy is that we, we overcame. Look at verse 8. Say, I will prevail because I have the seed of Christ. And the more I go through crisis, the purer I become. 
In other words, the seed of God is fireproof. It's persecution proof. It's eternal damnation proof. Oh, say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Verse 8. Whom having not seen yet, which is Christ, you love him. In whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. So, so the joy of the Lord is in the spirit of the seed. It's inherent. It's it's, 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 it's inherent. That same seed was in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, where in the midst of the fire, the seed of God in them made them praise God. The, the next verse says, up to verse 12, and then verse 23, it says, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. And, and it says that, of which salvation, say salvation, salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. So the prophets were prophesying about this Christ whom they never saw. But the prophecies were very accurate because the prophecies were born of the seed of God, which was Christ. But they had a preemptive idea that one day this spirit whom we have been prophesying about will, will appear in the flesh. And that, that, that spirit will, will become life and will dwell among men. The Bible said the prophets prophesied it in the Old Testament and had an idea but could not understand how that could be a possibility. What they couldn't understand to be a possibility, we are seeing as a possibility. Because Christ really became flesh. That seed of the woman, which made them prophesy in the days of Isaiah, became life today. That you and I have received Christ as Lord and Savior. He came and died and rose again. As a seed that could not be killed. That could, could, could not be destroyed by the grave. And rose again. The triumphal seed. The incorruptible seed. That's why people like Daniel, who had in him this incorruptible seed, the lion couldn't destroy him because he was a seed of God. That's why Haman couldn't kill Esther because she was an incorruptible seed. See, hallelujah, somebody. Receive in your spirit the faith that you are a seed of God and you are protected. Your business is preserved. Your church is preserved. Your children are preserved. It's only a matter of time. Look at verse 11, please. And then we end with verse 23. Church, let's read. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when he testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glory that shall be shown up. So here, they were prophesying and they felt in their spirits by the seed that was in them that Christ shall be revealed. He shall die, but he shall rise up again. But in their mind, how can this be? And they looked into it. They looked into it. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. I said what? They looked. Watch this. The, the prophets searched. How can this be? Not only them, angels also searched. Because this seed was far above the angelic realm of revelation. And, 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 and it's in you. So it puts you above the angelic class. For sure. It was too high grade of a seed that the devil thought he could get in the Garden of Eden, but missed it. Oh, say hallelujah, somebody. So can I say something? What the devil did by lying to Adam and Eve helped us. Because then we would have been seed after Adam. Yeah. Not, not the right seed of Christ. So, so the devil thinking that he stole the Mercedes Benz, God preserved the Bentley for us. I mean, they, they, are, they, are, they are pretty close. So, so the devil stole a motorcycle and, and God preserved the Dreamliner, the airplane for us. 
So what he thought, he stole the motorcycle. I wouldn't call it uh, Harley Davidson, no, because it's too American. <laughs> no way. We shall call it motorcycle, hallelujah, <laughs> something. <laughs> oh, oh, motorcycle corruptible. Yeah, it's better. Motorcycle corruptible. But he did not know that God preserved the original sin. It's like the, the devil came into your house and saw gold. It was fake gold. But the real gold, you kept in the bank. He robbed the house, but it was only fake gold. But the real one was in the bank. Christ was in the bank. Receive the anointing. I said receive the anointing. The Bible says God, God, God hid this seed and God preserved this seed that even the prophets couldn't locate it, even angels couldn't locate it. Look at verse 12. Read with me aloud, please. Let's preach this message. Are you enjoying this message? And those who are watching around the world, may the seed of God grow in you. You are the seed. Your church will never go down. Your business will not go down. Your children will not backslide. I am guarantee you by the word of God, you shall grow again. With the incorruptible seed. Prosperity is a matter of course. And to whom it was revealed, watch this, that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost. Sent down from heaven, read with me, which things the angels desire to look into. The last sentence, let's read again. Which things the angels, one more time, which things God said, watch this, I will preserve my seed. And this seed was so pure that even the, the angels said, ah, what is this? It's far above our revelation. And that seed is in you. That's why, that's why your calling is to confound the world. Because you are having a seed in you, which is Christ Jesus. Above all, above all, above all, you are a seed of God. That's why the righteous shall fall seven times, but shall rise up again. Because that seed is incorruptible. That's why Christ, the prime primus seed, died and rose again. Look at verse 23 as we conclude. Are you with me? Amen. Receive this in your spirit. Let's read aloud as we conclude. Being born again. One more time. Being born again. One more time. Being born again. One more time. One more time. Being born again. Not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abides forever. Which lives and abides forever. Hey, we have been born again by an incorruptible seed. Hallelujah. Say amen. amen. The seed survived Genesis, survived Exodus, survived Leviticus, survived Numbers, survived Deuteronomy, survived Joshua, survived the judges, survived all the minor prophets, survived the major prophets. Survive Matthew, survive Mark, survive Luke, survive John, survive all the epistles, survive the book of Revelation, and it's in you today. It's in you today. It's in me today. Say hallelujah. It's an incorruptible seed. Say hallelujah, somebody. I bless you with this revelation. May this anointing be upon your finances, upon your children, upon all that you do, that you are born with an incorruptible seed. Your prosperity is of an incorruptible seed. God's promises are of incorruptible seed. You shall arise and go forth in the name of the Lord. Arise, shine, for your light is come, because you are a seed of God. Ah. Come on, see later, Bahia. I release the seed of God upon, the, upon Bellevue, upon the Northwest, upon America, upon Asia, upon Europe, upon Afghanistan, upon all the continents of the sea. I declare this day, the seed of the promise shall prosper, shall grow. 
The church shall arise. The church shall arise. The church shall arise. Because we are the seed of God. Oh, masaka kaka basaka pahaya. Ladies and gentlemen, I prophesy that if the seed is incorruptible, then, then by the end of the ages, we shall have more seed of God than the devil. Amen. There shall be more people in heaven than in hell. Because we have the seed that survives all things. Ah. Say, I receive the glory of God in the seed of God. The seed, the seed, the seed is an excellent seed. Amen. Well, pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for making me a seed of heaven. I receive the incorruptibility of your spirit that makes me triumph that makes me shine that makes me lead that makes me overcome I am a fruitful seed and I will produce a fruitful vine wherever I go I am healed I am strong I am more than a conqueror by Christ Jesus Amen Well, for those who have been watching around the globe, the Lord bless you. May you prosper. And we shall see you next Sunday at the same time. But whilst you leave, remember that you are of the seed of God. And you excel. Amen. Surely, goodness and message shall follow us. On the days of our lives, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever.